Hello everyone, my name is Sam Spain and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals in GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be continuing with part two of data structures. I'm going to repeat this a lot as we go through these data structures tutorials, but getting this idea down will help you not only with the built-in data structures, but also with making your own data structures. So a data structure is a collection of data values, the relationships between them, and the functions that you can use with that data structure. And of course, GameMaker Studio 2 has several built-in data structures. In part one, we talked about the data structure variable as well as accessors. In this part, we're going to talk about memory management and the scope of a data structure. Most of the time, GameMaker Studio 2 handles all of your memory stuff behind the scenes. In fact, if you're new to programming, you might not even know that this is something that's important. Many programming languages, especially older programming languages, do not handle your memory for you. You must do it manually. So whenever you create things, you have to allocate memory. Whenever you destroy things, you have to free memory. You don't really have to do that in GameMaker Studio 2, with a couple exceptions. And one of those exceptions are data structures. If you don't destroy the data structures that you create, you will create a memory leak. If you create a memory leak long enough, you will use up all of the available memory and crash the program. This is very important and you should be very careful about this, but it should not scare you away from actually using data structures. Data structures are incredibly important to programming. They have many very useful functions and you're gonna have to use them. So you just wanna get used to this idea of creating and destroying data structures. The way I think of it is anytime you create code to create a data structure or you write code to create a data structure, you should immediately go and write code to destroy that data structure. Or to put it another way, every DS list create should have its DS list destroy. And I have an asterisk here because there is one exception when you're using uh, maps and lists if you're using the JSON structure. But if you're not doing that, in general, every create has to have its own destroy. And along with that comes another very important point. You should not lose your references to the data structure. We talked about this in part one, but whenever you create a data structure, you create an index to that data structure and you would save it to a variable. So the data structure exists outside of the instance. You have the instance over here, you have the data structure over here. The instance just has a variable that holds a reference to that data structure. But what happens if you lose that reference? You either destroy this instance before destroying the data structure or you reassign this variable to some other data. Well, now all of a sudden, the instance exists over here and it has a variable that doesn't point to this data structure. In fact, nothing points to this data structure, so it's lost forever. You can never reference it or destroy it. And if you do this multiple times, you get a bunch of data structures that just exist out here, lost forever, taking up memory. If you do this a lot, and you do have to do it a lot, you will eventually use up all the available memory and your program will crash. And so this is why it's so important to destroy the data structures that you create. Again, don't be scared of the memory leaks. Use data structures. Just be careful when you're doing them. Always write your destroy functions to free up that memory. The next thing I want to talk about in this tutorial is the data structure scope. The important thing to get here is that you need to remember the distinction between the data structures index and the variable it is saved in. The index is globalish in scope. I say globalish in scope because again, the index is really just the number. It's just an integer. It might be zero, one, five, etc. But the point is any function that references a data structure, if you give it that index, can reference that data structure if that data structure exists. So multiple instances can reference the same data structure if they know the index. So you can just think of the index as being globalish in scope. However, the variable the index is saved in is not. The variable the index is saved in functions just like any other variable in GameMaker Studio 2. It has the same scope. So if it is a global variable, it looks global. If it's an instance variable, it'll get destroyed when that instance is destroyed. And if it's a local variable, it'll be gone at the end of the event or script that created it. And as demonstrated in our prior slide, you don't want to lose all references to the index or you have a lost data structure that you can't reference and destroy. So again, quick diagram to illustrate this. You can have multiple instances, each of which hold a variable that reference a data structure. All of these instances could reference, pull, use or even change data from this data structure. But the data structure exists out here and each variable in each instance just has a variable with an index referencing it. This can be one of the harder points to get. Let's switch over to GameMaker Studio 2 and see some examples. Okay, so we've run the program. We've stopped at our breakpoint. 
We're going to do all of this with the list. Again, you don't really need to know what a list is or how it works for this. Uh, you, we're just going to be tracking the references or the index. But for the most part, you can think of a list as a fancy array. It's basically an array that has a bunch of features that the normal array doesn't have, such as sort or shuffle or delete. So we create our list. And as we talked about in part one, we have to tell GameMaker Studio 2 to treat this as a list. So it currently is empty. Next, we're going to add a bunch of values in over here. Then we're going to assign the data held in the variable my list, which is just a zero, to a global variable, global.list. So now we have our global variable over here. And again, we're going to say view this as a DS list. So now these are both referencing the same data structure. Now we're going to destroy the list using the variable held or using the value held in the my list variable. And you can see that this has destroyed it for both both the global variable and the instance variable now reference an invalid data structure. One important thing to keep in mind here is that the variables still exist and the value those variables hold still exists. They both still hold the value zero. It's just that there is no list data structure for zero, so it's returning invalid structure. So now let's see a couple more examples. So we're going to have a script return largest number. And for both of these scripts, we're just going to pass in a bunch of random numbers from zero to 10. So go in, we're going to create our list over here, list zero. And then we're going to loop through the various arguments we provided. So we provided one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's six. And here are the various random numbers created. And we're going to add them into this list. So here we go. We're adding them in. And you might notice something strange. As we add them into this list, these lists get them as well. And again, that's because these lists or these variables just hold the value zero. We just created another list that also has the index zero because GameMaker Studio 2 reuses those indexes. So all of a sudden, a list with an index of zero is now valid. Even though we wouldn't necessarily intend my list or the global list to reference this newly created list, they will. And this is very important to keep in mind. In fact, if you want to be safe, one thing you can actually do is you could, after destroying a list like this, you could set those variables to negative one so that they wouldn't accidentally refer to that value anymore. I normally don't do this. I think it's better just to have code that doesn't accidentally reference a data structure after it's being destroyed. So in other words, you'll notice that this code is pretty short, easy not to make this mistake, but we're not referencing the variable my list or global.list after we destroy that list. But if we wanted to be extra safe, we could just have set these to negative one. So again, we're adding these variables in. So now we get to use one of the built-in functions. We pass in list and we say sort. And we can see that our list is now sorted. So the job of this function is to return the largest number. So we're gonna get the largest, which is the first position or the zeroth position of this list. We're gonna save it to the value and we're going to destroy the list. And now this brings me to a very important point. We created a list in this script. We saved that list index to list right here. We are returning only a value, which means we do not need this list anymore. If we don't destroy this list in this script, because this is a local variable, once this script is over, no variable will refer to this list and we can no longer destroy it. So whenever you're creating a temporary list in a script, if you're not returning that list, which we'll see an example of next, but if you're not returning that list, you need to destroy the list before you end the script. So we would destroy that list. We have the value that we want to return. We return that value and save it to a number. There we go. So now a number is the highest value. So we pass in a bunch of random numbers. We get the highest one that we passed in and we returned it and saved it to a number. Now we're going to do a very similar thing, except instead of returning the highest value, we're actually just going to return the sorted list. So again, pass in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six random numbers from over here. Same thing. I'm just going to go through this quickly, create the list, add all the values to the list. And we can still see that again, this is list zero because GameMaker Studio 2 reuses the index. So we pass them all in. Next, we're going to sort them all. So now they're all sorted and here, Instead of returning a value from the list, we're returning the list itself. So we're returning the value zero. We no longer need to destroy the list inside the script. Even though this variable 
is a local variable and thus is going to go away at the end of the script. The value held in it is returned and held by another list. So now another list holds a reference to, oh, we got to advance the one. Another list holds that reference to that list, which we can see over here is indeed our sorted list. And so now we can destroy it. So if you create a data structure in a script, it isn't necessary for you to destroy the data structure, assuming you're returning the reference to that data structure to something else, so that something else holds the reference to that data structure, the index of that data structure. And this is what I mean when I say you don't want to lose all references to the index. You can lose some references to the index, so one variable that holds the index, such as the local variable in a script, can go away, so long as that index is passed to another variable and you're tracking that in some way uh, in your code and then destroying that data structure later on. So in summary, you must manually destroy data structures. The data structure is global-ish in scope, or the index to the data structure is global-ish in scope. However, the variable the index is saved in is not. So you want to remember the distinction between the data structure index and the variable that it's saved in, and make sure there's always at least one reference to that data structure so that you can destroy the data structure when you're done with it. One last thing I should have put in the slides is GameMaker Studio 2 does destroy data structures at the end. So when you close the program, all data structures are destroyed. So you don't need to destroy a data structure at the end of a game. If a data structure is going to exist up until the time the game ends, you don't need to destroy it. GameMaker Studio 2 will handle that. You won't have a memory leak. However, I generally do anyways, uh, because maybe something in my code will change. It'll be refactored. And now all of a sudden that data structure isn't uh, going to be destroyed at the end of the game. It might need to be destroyed earlier. And I want to remember that. So for me personally, whenever I create a data structure, I always create a destroy function for that data structure, even if it's at the end of the game and is therefore unnecessary. So I remember to destroy it if I were to change something in my code uh, that would require it. As always, the links in this slide will be below, along with links to the source code and the slides themselves. And that's it. Thanks for watching.